I lived in Sylvester for the first part of my life, from two years old all the way till 18, 19 years old. As a matter of fact, I went through kindergarten to 12th grade in Worth County School System. My dad uh, actually was my principal uh, a few of those years. And a lot of people ask me, said, what was it like with your dad being a principal? And uh, I'm like, actually, I think it saved my life. I think that uh, he being involved and being so close to me inside of the school, uh, it really did help. I think I graduated high school because of him. Man, when I think about Sylvester, um, I think about a lot of things. Oh, the peanut festival, every year when it rolled around in the fall, uh, I think about going shopping at the Empire Mercantile, which is no longer in existence. I remember in 1987 uh, that we won the state championship in football. So many things, so many memories. A lot of, a lot of people uh, in this town, a lot of people that I've grown up with, uh, that I know, that I love and love me. Generally, I was a, a good kid, uh, but man, something happened. And um, I, my, my life changed and I started going after the party scene, the drugs and alcohol and you know everything that goes with that. Uh, but at age 24, all of that changed. Uh, that's when I met Jesus. That's when um, he, I realized for the first time who God was, what he did, and that he saved me. And I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And he made me new. And not only did he make me new by calling me from something, but he called me to something. He called me to pastor and to start churches. We call that church planting. So back in 2008, uh, we decided to plant a church. We feel like that's what the Lord was telling us to do, and, and so we did. And uh, we planted it in Albany, Georgia. We were sitting around trying to figure out what to call the church, what's the name of this church going to be. And eventually I said, you know what? I grew up on Greenbrier Avenue in Sylvester, Georgia. Let's just call it Greenbrier Church. <laughs> and so it stuck, and we did. That's the name of our church, Greenbrier Church. Man, over the years, God has really been good to us. He's really blessed us. We've seen a lot of people come to know Jesus, a lot of people be discipled, and a lot of those people make disciples. But a part of what uh, our, our church is all about is reproducing, and we want to plant more churches. Our church body prayed for more than two years. God, where do you want us to plant the next church, and who is it that's gonna oversee it? Over the course of a couple of years, it was so evident to us that God was saying Sylvester. I mean, there was no question about it. The who? Gordon King. We had a conversation and they told us about this church, Greenbrier, that they had started. And we was like, hmm, maybe we'll come check it out Sunday. So we did. Um, we came. Um, we enjoyed the service. We started attending. We've been there ever since. We started to connect. We, we started to plug in and, and serve in the different areas. And God really transitioned our lives from that. He's really changed us. Um, me and Tracy actually became small group leaders. Um, we led small groups for a while, and I mean, that's where we really learned to love and to, to serve others. But starting to to have that desire to love others and to serve others. And um, through that, I think Tim recognized that in me. I told my wife at times that, you know, I just feel like I'm supposed to do, there's more than this for me. I just feel like, I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. I don't know why I even feel like I have this desire to do something more, but I feel like there's this, this is just the beginning it was in 2012, I believe it was. Me and Tracy actually took a little time off and, and we'd come down to the beach. It's just a you know, normal day. I'm here playing with my kids. But while I was there, there was this kid back off to my left, probably 25, 30 yards out in the water. I realized he was struggling. He began to show the signs that he was struggling. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I don't know what to do to help him. I've got my own kids I gotta worry about and I know if I go out that my youngest son Mason he's just gonna follow me right in the water and and so you know what I do nobody else is paying attention to him so I'm standing there watching him and it's like I just felt this prompting it, it, it just became more and kept resonating you need to help it, it's like an audible voice and I don't know that that's what it was but it, it's quit wading in the water and help 
within a few minutes, I had a hold of the kid and was able to drag him to the beach. But I kept reflecting over the next few weeks. I kept replaying this in my mind, how this happened. It was literally like somebody was speaking to me. Even though I was leading small groups and even though I was coaching small group leaders, I was not giving it 100%. Matter of fact, I wasn't even trusting God with every ounce or fabric of what He had, had put in me or was calling me to do. I haven't trusted Him or even stepped out 100% on faith. Through it, I realized, I don't know what to do with this. So I called my pastor, Tim. I told him, I said, I feel like I'm supposed to help others in some form. I don't know what that looks like from a ministerial standpoint. And um, he said, Gordon, we've been praying for you. We've, we've been praying that you would step up. You know, we've been praying, are you being called into the ministry? And it was through that process that the door was open for me to walk through and be assessed as an elder and eventually become an elder. A little after the first of the year that we went on an elders retreat, and one of the verses one morning was actually Acts 20. And when I read that passage, those words, you know how I have lived among you, they hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. Gordon King is one of those men who, once they're called to something, once, they're, once their heart is set on something, he's one of those guys, he's just gonna go for it. If you ever get in a tough time, if you look to your left or right, one of the two places, Gordon's gonna be there. He's just that kind of a man. As the elders prayed about it and kind of processed it, um, it became clear and apparent to them that yes, Gordon is the guy and Sylvester is the place. We want to plant the gospel here. We want a church that's going to be making disciples that make disciples, intentionally being on mission, on purpose, to serve, to love their community, and share the love of God with everyone in this city. That's, that's it. It's simple. That's the vision. On March 25th, which is Good Friday, we're going to have our first preview service right here in Sylvester. It's going to be at the community center right next to the high school. And our hope is is that this will be a catalyst that, that catapults us into the community to let them know, look, we love you, we care about you, and we, we're here to serve you. We're just average, everyday people who have a heart for Christ and know that what He has called us to and what He's commanded us to do is go out and make disciples.